what I'd like to do is just um, sort of take you through two different performance scenarios. We're going to call one good early performance where the stock price starts at 10 and then rises up to uh, 30 in year four before dropping back to 20 in year five. And then we're going to contrast that with bad early performance where the stock price, <coughs> excuse me, also starts at 10, but then declines to um, five in year three before rising back up to 20 in year five. Um, so here we have the same cumulative performance in both cases. And what we're going to do is just illustrate the dynamics of competitive pay policy, where um, we're going to say market pay is a thousand each year. And each year, we're going to calculate the number of um, stock shares we grant by just taking market pay and dividing by the stock price at the start of the year. So in both of our scenarios, you know, we get 100 shares um, for each scenario because the beginning stock price is 10. But then for good early performance, as the stock price um, gets up to, to 25, um, the number of shares granted falls from 100 to, uh, to 50. Um, or excuse me, in um, year three, when the stock price at the end of the year is 20, the, the uh, number of shares granted um, falls to 50. And then it falls to 40 in year four um, and even 33 in year five. Um, by contrast, in bad early performance, um, the number of shares um, in year three, based on the stock price at the end of year two, is 167. It's 200 in year four, based on the $5 price at the end of year three. And if we compare these two scenarios, we can see that for good early performance, we end up with a total of 290 shares worth 5,800. But for bad early performance, we end up with um, 735 shares worth 14,690. So we have a difference in pay of over 150%, even though we have exactly the same cumulative performance. Now, um, it's also important to note in this case that the percent of pay at risk is 100%. So that the people who say that, that we're going to get a strong incentive because we have a high percent of pay at risk, we can see in this situation that we get very different results um, for the same cumulative performance. And that's going to make it quite difficult to achieve a strong incentive. Let's now uh, move the slide and um, take this um, little example and put it into a graph. And um, um, what we're going to do is on the vertical axis, we're going to plot relative pay. And we know that in, in bad early performance, we ended up with uh, 14,690 versus um, market pay, cumulative market pay of 5,000. So that's a, a multiple of almost three. So we see bad early performance way up top. Um, for <clears throat> good early performance, um, we ended up with $5,800 versus market pay of, of um, $5,000. So that's way down below it at a, a relative pay of $1.16. We would anticipate from a simple graph like this that if this practice is widely followed, um, we're not going to get a very high correlation of relative pay and relative performance. And um, um, if we move to the next slide, we can see that that's what happens when we look at, at real data. And um, um, this graph actually shows data for um, S&P 1500 um, CEOs. And we have the same concept uh, we did in our prior graph, namely that we have relative pay on the vertical axis and we have relative performance on the horizontal axis. And um, this is data that um, calculates realizable pay, just like we were using in our simple example. So it's actually capturing the value of pay, taking into account changes in the value of equity compensation uh, um, over the vesting period. Um, this is all um, numbers that I estimated from uh, Standard & Poor's ExecuComp database um, um, from grant data. Um, and when we look at this and we look at the relationship between relative pay on the vertical axis and relative pay on the horizontal axis, you know, we see that <clears throat> there really is a terribly low correlation of pay for performance. It's only about 10%. This is not surprising given uh, our simple example where we saw that there were two observations 
um, quite a ways apart from each other for the same um, performance. So that um, what we can see is that um, when we look at real data, um, actual pay data, that, that we show a weak correlation of relative pay and performance that's not dissimilar from just our simple example of illustrating um, the impact of competitive pay policy. Thank you.